We are in the 37th week of pregnancy, which is crazy to think about. And I have been given the go ahead to go full blown on my labor preparation methods. Now these things that I'm gonna show you guys that I'm doing in this video are not ways to induce labor. I think people think that some of these things will just like make you go into labor right away. And that's not the case, it's just helping prep for labor. So helping the cervix, toning the uterus. These were all things that were recommended from my midwife. So I'm not doing anything that like maybe I just found online. And it's always good to talk to your doctor in your specific case to make sure that what you are doing is safe for you. So I'm just going to show you guys, I was going to vlog anyways, and this is what I'm doing in my life right now is just these little methods and concoctions that I'm creating and enjoying and just doing in this chapter while we still prepare and while we wait for little girl. I've just, oh, this is not ready and I just got this all over me. I need to go grab the other one, hold on. Okay, that other one I had just recently filled up. So I'm getting some ice. This is my red raspberry leaf tea. And how I did this was I just put three tea bags in here. We have raspberry leaf. And so my previous batch, I used raspberry leaf from our bush and I steeped that, but I noticed that I had red raspberry leaf tea here at home. So I was like, oh, I might as well use this. So this batch, I did three tea bags in hot water. I let it sit on the countertop, let it steep until it cooled. And then I put that in the fridge overnight with the tea bags and I let it kind of just steep and do its thing overnight and get cool. So now it's an iced tea. The claims of red raspberry leaf tea is that it tones the uterus, that it prepares the cervix, it can improve labor outcomes and reduce labor times. Do your own research and come to your own conclusions of all of that. The same thing with 100% pineapple juice. This, with the pineapple juice, it tastes like an iced tea refresher. It feels very tropical. And because it's summertime here in New Zealand, it's actually just perfect. We have been watching a course online called Hatched Antenatal. And it is from a midwife here in New Zealand, but she has courses worldwide she offers it i'll put her link in the description box i've been really loving it alex and i did in-person courses we did a month-long course where there were four classes and it was called happy birthday and it was something that they offer in town at the hospital so we went to that it was wonderful we learned so much it was a lot about hypnobirthing but a lot about just like birth and labor in general and then we went to a class called Spinning Babies, which I've talked with you guys about on YouTube, like on another vlog. I was telling you guys about how she was head up for a little while. She was breached, but then now she's moved. Yesterday, I went to my midwife appointment and she could feel her head like right in my pelvis. The Spinning Babies course, we've been doing all the positions pretty much every day and they offer Spinning Babies all over the world. There's only one course that you can go to in person here in New Zealand and luckily just by chance we have that class here in the area that we live in. The Spinning Babies course is all about encouraging baby to be in the right position. So you can look it up online. You can actually probably sign up for a course in your area if you wanna go in person. But the course just teaches different positions and exercises that you can do to encourage that and to help just kind of stabilize your body for birth. For me, educating myself on birth and labor is really helpful. When I feel informed, I feel more empowered, and I feel like I'm more in the know about what's going to happen. If you are pregnant and you're nervous about labor, I highly recommend, yeah, looking into educating yourself because it has helped me. Of course, I'm still a first time mom. I've never been through it yet. So I'm telling you guys where I'm at right now with it. And if you are someone who's in the same timeline as me or a little bit earlier, then I would, I would recommend taking a course of some sort to just help. It just helped also just like ease some anxieties around it because everyone's gonna feel nervous before birth. It's 
intense. It's a process. It's probably one of the biggest moments in a, in a woman's life. In terms of just like a physical, emotional, life-changing experience. Last night, I started just weeping. Like tears just rolling down my face. And when Alex was asking me what was wrong, like I didn't really have a straight answer. Obviously it was hormones. And so I Googled like, is it normal to be very emotional at the end of pregnancy? And what I got back was suddenly feeling very tearful or moody can be a subtle sign that your labor is beginning. Moodiness is caused by the changing levels of hormones in your body as it prepares to give birth. So that was like, okay, whether I'm not beginning labor <laughs> right now or not, my body is going through such intense hormonal shifts right now. And that's why I'm feeling this like weepy, very emotional, lots of different feelings, like really good, nervous, anxious, excited, happy, scared, you know, all of these feelings all in one. And just with that hormone shift, it just, caused a lot of emotion last night, but I was able to get myself kind of out of it in, in this really positive space afterwards because of what I did in my night routine, which I'll show you guys as we move forward in this video. So the dates thing, a lot of people know to start doing dates at the end of pregnancy for all sorts of different reasons, primarily to prep the cervix, that's the whole thing to make it soft and easier for baby to wiggle his or her way out of there. We've been harvesting a lot of plums lately. I'll show you guys. We have so many from the tree right now. Not that plums are any part of preparation for labor or anything like that. Just a side note. Um, look how many plums we have right now. These smell so good. Plums just smell delicious. This is a big bowl. I don't know if the video shows you how big this bowl is, but it's ginormous. And then we've got this little basket where we've harvested the first pear, which the pear tree's not ready yet, but it will be soon and I love pears, I'm so excited. Pears and plums are probably my favorite fruits. We have some peach here as well that we've harvested from a peach tree that would never produce anything for us. And now it's giving us a little bit, which is nice after a lot of love and care over the last seasons or two. And here are more plums. And then we have this big old tote bag of plums. Plum jam, some plum sauce. If any of you guys have plum recipe recommendations, let me know in the comments below because we've got to think of all the different ways to use plums. We don't have a ridiculous amount just yet, I don't know if we have more trees that we need to harvest, but we don't have a crazy, crazy amount that we can't handle. We want to be preserving, but it's also a really interesting time in our life right now, obviously, because we have a lot going on. So preserving jams and stuff like that, we just have to make the time for it probably this weekend, actually. A very exciting new update is that this little changing table dresser situation is pretty much sorted and ready. I showed you guys in my last vlog how I organized all these drawers and I'm really happy with how everything has come together. I put her 20 week scan in a little frame and I put up the Beatrix Potter drawings, paintings, watercolor. I'm not really sure, but I got them in a secondhand shop. I've showed you guys them before. I absolutely love these, so I put them on the opposite sides of this little wavy mirror that I love. That's just a little postpartum cart that I've showed you guys before. And then this folder actually has a bunch of birth information from that course that I told you guys about. So I just kind of popped that in here. It probably won't stay there, but because I've flipped through it a couple times, I put it right here. And this is my little belly band that I was using the other day because my back was kind of hurting. This is me today. The belly is popping off. She is large and in charge. Let's talk about how freaking cute this is, by the way. Oh my gosh. It's a little counting sheep guy that will go over her crib with the little moon and the clouds and the stars. I love it so much. When her crib comes in, I will 
install that on to the crib. The two main things that I'm waiting for for the nursery, the crib and the rocking chair, which are two very main <laughs> staple pieces for the nursery. I just ordered the crib today actually because I found one that I liked, really good price, it was on sale, it's beautiful, it's perfect. And they say on the website that they ship really quick, all the reviews were like came so quick and was really easy to assemble. I'm very excited about that. And then the rocking chair, I got a call that it's like in the warehouse and that the shipping company is gonna call me to pick a day to drop it off. So it should be coming within the next week or so, I'm hoping. But like I told you guys last week, I'm not worried about having the nursery completely finished before she arrives because we have everything we need for her if she comes tomorrow. So we're all good with that. If it's done before she arrives, awesome, even better. And we have time, I think. <laughs> um, her due date's in like two and a half weeks. So if everything arrives in the next two and a half weeks, then we can have it repaired. But if it doesn't, then it's all good. It is later in the day, it's the evening now. We went and had some dinner out because we just kind of felt like it. We were like, let's just eat out tonight. I haven't done that in a while. So we went out to dinner and then we stopped by the grocery store to get a bunch of snacks because the other day our friend was like, you need to bring a bunch of snacks and easy, like quick meals to the hospital because she was saying that they feed me but they don't <laughs> feed my partner so that being said it's just good to have your own snacks like i love like powerade when i need some electrolytes so we got powerade a bunch of bars and chips and just like snacks to keep us going when we're hungry at the hospital and we just want something that feels familiar and comfortable. I always put up, turn on my pink Himalayan salt crystal when I come into the bathroom in the evening to kind of start on my routine. Going to take a magnesium salt bath. This is something I don't do every night, but I've been doing pretty regularly lately. Magnesium just really helps with any like aches and pains that I might feel in my legs. Um, this is my little pink Himalayan salt crystal that I love. I packed one of these because I have a spare one that I had in the nursery. They have fairy lights at the hospital, like up against the window and it's like low lit. But I brought my own just in case I wanted more. And then I have this pink Himalayan salt crystal. I have my diffuser. So I brought some stuff to set the mood. I have this big old tub of pure magnesium bath flakes to detox, hydrate, energize. Doesn't really energize me, more so relaxes me. I just do a lukewarm bath. I don't do anything too hot. It's summer here in New Zealand, so it's not cold. So taking a lukewarm bath is actually like kind of nice and refreshing. <coughs> I've just put on some belly oil after the bath and I've put on one of Alex's big shirts and his boxers as well. Honestly, just for the sake of this video, I have been sleeping in the nude because I get really hot at night because when you're this pregnant, you run hot. When you're pregnant in general, you run hot. So I have to sleep naked lately, but I am currently on my birth ball. I'm going to lower this a little bit and show you guys some of the movements I've been doing on the birth ball. So I've been doing this like sway side to side. And then I do this forward and back tilt like this. And then I do circles like that and then I do some cat cows like that and I normally do these exercises when I 
I'm listening to an affirmation. So I'll show you guys my favorite labor affirmation that I've been listening to most nights. I never have this side light on. It's normally this light like this. And <laughs> in this room, it lights up a lot and you can see it pretty clearly, but with the camera, you can barely see me. So I'll have, I'll turn that light on. That's the other light in the room. It's not as in your face. I made a pregnancy and birth playlist. Right now it's three hours and 25 minutes and I want it to be probably double that. But I listen to this playlist a lot when I'm doing my birthing exercises. Sometimes I listen to, especially the positive affirmations, when I'm just putting, putting my belly oil on at the end of the night. This one is from Pop That Mama. <laughs> Sounds weird, but it's Pop That and then M-U-M-M-A. -M -M Hypnobirthing Positive Affirmations Listen Daily. It is so good. I could not recommend it more. I just searched on Spotify positive birth affirmations. This came up. She has the most soothing accent. I'll play a little bit for you guys. My body for this day. I'm and I am more ready than ever before. I am more ready than ever before. I totally accept and embrace the pain sensations of labor because I know that they are me <sighs> and so they can't be stronger than me. I, that was like the perfect spot to land on to show you guys because it's just so good. The things that she says just like hits you and I love listening to it. I haven't listened to, to it tonight and I'm about to do that in a moment after I'm done speaking with you guys. Another thing I'm loving, Ina May's Guide to Childbirth on my Kindle. Ina May's Guide to Childbirth. I will find the link for you guys and put it in the description box. Another thing I do in the evening, Evening Primrose Oil. Up the V. Two capsules. These were given to me by my midwife, so I don't know what the brand is or anything like that but she gave me a week supply in this brown bag and then each week I see her because I see her every week right now. She gives me a new bag of these. They go all the way up the V, as close to the cervix as possible and it's supposed to really just help prepare that cervix. The oil will help it just kind of loosen up so that it can just glide right out of there, right? Because it's gonna be that easy just I am so unbelievably tired now, so I am going to build myself a little fort. <laughs> you know if you are pregnant or have been pregnant before, all the pillows have to be in the exact right place. If they're not, it's impossible to sleep. So I'm going to make my little cocoon over here and I'm going to go to bed. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I feel like there was a lot of information. And again, remember, I'm, I've am i never done this before. So I'm just telling you guys what I'm doing right now to prepare and what my midwife has recommended for me to do. And just wanted to bring you guys along with kind of what, yeah, how I'm how I'm personally preparing. I would love to hear advice from you guys who have already given birth and who had a positive birth experience. I have had quite a few followers message me on Instagram with their positive birth stories. One who just recently gave birth, she gave me some tips and I've been doing the tips and so I'm very open to all the advice that you guys have for me. Thank you for watching and I will see you very soon in anyone.